Ladies and gentlemen, when the whole IHG estate is taken into account, that includes franchised as well as managed hotels, there is a figure of 345,000 employees worldwide. Now, bringing together 345,000 people to be able to act collectively for all the brands that represent IHG is no easy fit. And therefore, of course, naturally, IHG really does have bringing people together at the very core of its values. And the chief executive of IHG, Richard Solomons, is by far one of the leading vocal defenders of our industry. So it is with great pleasure that, A, first I would like to thank you, Richard, for your strong support in pulling this platform together to really facilitate the start of this collective action. So thank you. And secondly, thank you for coming to join us to speak today. So please, Richard Solomons. Thank you very much, Ufi. Good morning, everyone. It is great to see so many people from our, our industry, our wider industry, here today at the Intercontinental London Park Lane. And uh, as you've heard, this event is a first for us all. And, and I also would like to thank our, our champion in Westminster, Tourism Minister John Penrose, for being, uh, being with us today and for his support. We do certainly appreciate his genuine efforts in representing our industry at the heart of government. So it's a privilege for IHG to be hosting this first ever UK Tourism Summit on the eve, eve of such an important weekend in this Olympic year. And as a British company, we're very pleased to be so involved. So we're proud to welcome you to this hotel, which is one of our flagship properties. And, and it's very fitting that we're here today, as this hotel's historic uh, history firmly links it to Britain and to the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Previously on the site of this hotel, was a townhouse, which was the childhood residence of the Queen. And she moved in with her parents when she was a year old in 1927 and lived here until 1936 when she moved to Buckingham Palace on the coronation of her father. Now, apparently, actually, the estate agents of the day thought the townhouse was unremarkable, uh, despite having 25 rooms and servant quarters, so not unremarkable for me. But unfortunately, it was destroyed uh, during the Blitz in World War II. And it wasn't until 1968 that we began work on this hotel, which was opened by the Duke of Wellington in September 1975. So nice to have a connection to the Queen. So turning back to the importance of this year to the UK, in a little over a month's time, as none of you can have failed to notice, we'll, we'll see the start of the London Olympic and Paralympic Games. And we're proud that Holiday Inn is the official hotel provider to the Games. And it's the first time, actually, a hotel company has been a fully-fledged Olympic partner, clearly demonstrating that LOCOG, the uh, London Organising Committee for the Games, recognises the value of having an expert hospitality provider on board. And we're helping LOCOG manage the Athletes' Village by bringing 90 of our best people from all over the world to London. And we've taken on the task of making 17,000 athletes feel at home during this important time in their lives. Now, our business at IHG, we describe quite simply, is about creating great hotels guests love. And as London 2012 village manager Tony Sainsbury told me when I visited the Olympic Park not so long ago, that the games are won and lost in the village. So we'll be doing our bit to make these the best games ever, with our world-class hospitality clearly on display. But fun and games aside, there is a serious matter of capitalizing on this once-in-a-generation opportunity to create an Olympic legacy for the UK and for the British tourism industry. And this is really important to us, and we put a lot of thought into what our involvement is beyond our Holiday Inn sponsorship. So one thing we're delighted about is the opening of a brand new Holiday Inn and a brand new Staybridge Suites Hotel in London Stratford, right at the gates of the Olympic Village in the borough of Newham. And we opened the hotels in partnership with Sykes Hotels and, and the co-owner of Sykes, John Wagner, who I see out there, is here with us today. And his hotels have created 120 jobs for local people in that borough. And uh, we'd love to be able to offer you a room at the Olympic Games, but I'm pleased to say, John, that we're full, which is a good thing. So part of our contribution to the Games legacy is through one of our core corporate responsibility initiatives, which we call the IHG Academy Programme. And that looks to train local people in hospitality. And our latest academy has been developed in East London in partnership with Newham College 
of uh, Newham College of Further Education and hotel owners in the area such as John. And from our first group of students, over half of the participants have already found jobs in IHG hotels. And that's what will deliver a genuine legacy uh, from the games. So at IHG, we're proud to be in the hotel business because hotels matter. The hospitality industry matters. You've heard you mention that. Because we have an important role to play in society and communities. You know, hotels and the hospitality industry help build long-term wealth for businesses and communities. And we create meaningful work and jobs that can help lift people out of poverty. And some see our industry as creating basic or even menial low-paying jobs, when in fact, you know, quite the opposite is true. And unlike many other industries, you can start at the bottom of our industry in hotels, in hospitality, and get to the top. When I joined IHG, our then vice chairman had started off as a dishwasher in the Holiday Inn Leicester. My good friend Lawrence Geller, who will be on the panel this morning, and who's now chief executive of a major US hotel company, has a similar story. And it's further proof that giving people a start in the hotel business or the hospitality business opens up huge opportunity. When Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg and I met with the IHG Academy students recently in Newham, many of them had incredible ambition. And one of the students we spoke to told me that she wanted to own her own hotel one day and she saw that training with us at our academy and starting in the hotel industry was her stepping stone to achieving it. Now we know that the Olympics, uh, the Diamond Jubilee and other events like the Rugby World Cup in 2015 provide a huge boost to and focus on our sector. And while I know that we'll all rise to the occasion and offer a world-class welcome, we can't let these opportunities make us complacent. Our business is a global one. Decisions on where to hold meetings or conventions or where to go on holiday, your travel plans are done on a global level. With that in mind, we do need to work out how to best carve out a long-term legacy for tourism and hospitality in this country. And we need proper recognition for what hospitality can deliver. And that's why this event today is so important. I think our industry sees the need to join up with those culture, sport, transport and other sectors to determine how we'll work better together. And we do need government to hear from us with one voice about how we can drive more wealth creation, more jobs and more revenues into the UK. Hospitality should be a top priority and part of the government's core infrastructure plans, just as other countries see it. In China, for example, the government has recently made travel and tourism one of its five pillars for driving economic growth, something maybe we can learn from here in the UK. Now, you'll be hearing a lot about how much more we can be doing to grow our industry. And let's not view things such as visas and VAT as obstacles to growth, but rather as areas where government can come on side and improve things, giving us levers to pull to enable growth. Now, the Minister's taken time to be with us today, not to hear us complain, but to understand how we can work better together. So I ask you to truly roll up your sleeves and take part in open, optimistic discussions about solutions. We need to win over the hearts and minds of government so they can really get behind us. And we can do the rest. I'd like to thank the Acting Deputy Head of the Chinese Mission to the UK, Minister Councillor Mr Pei Wu, for being here today. As I mentioned, we're very pleased. You know, the Chinese government considers the tourism industry as so fundamental to the country's growth. And we see this support, along with the expanding number of domestic travelers in China and their growing interest in global travel, as you saw in the, the little video, as driving forces for our business. And I'm proud of IHG's long heritage in China, where we have 170 hotels open and plans for over 150 in the next few years. My thanks also to Ufi Ibrahim and the BHA for organizing this event, and I hope to speak uh, with many of you in the course of the day. The general manager of our new hotel, the soon-to-open Intercontinental London Westminster, Andrew Coney, is here today, I think, looking in the room. There he is. Um, as is our Europe chief executive, Angela Brave, who you'll see on a panel shortly, and our UK and Ireland managing director, Stephen McCall. So we're very pleased to be here to support um, this great, uh, this great summit, which I think is a fantastic idea. So with that, let me, let me wish you uh, all well in your discussions today. Thank you.